Good morning. If you happen to have a copy of the authorized version of the scriptures, please go ahead and get it. Please go ahead and get it. Read along with me word for word, verse by verse, of what we're going to be looking at today. Read along with me. Follow me along. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Also, read along with me because sometimes the mouth here goes quicker than the brain. Hopefully the thumbnail that uh, I just made, hopefully I'll be able to use that because that's a nice little thumbnail. Kind of gets the point across. Too superstitious. Today is Friday the 13th. Yeah. Deuteronomy chapter 12. Deuteronomy chapter 12. Verses 1 on to verse 4 to begin. These are the statutes and judgments which ye shall observe to do in the land which the Lord God of thy fathers giveth thee to possess it. All the days that ye live upon the earth, ye shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which ye shall possess served their gods upon the high mountains, and upon the high hills, and upon every green tree. And ye shall throw, and ye shall overthrow their altars, and break down their pillars, and break, excuse me, see, and break their pillars, and burn their groves with fire. And ye shall, and ye shall hew down the graven images of their gods, and destroy the names of them out of that place. Ye shall not do so unto the Lord your God. Those of us who are saints, Church of the Living God, we are commanded, and this is something that crosses dispensational lines, we are not to worship or serve the Lord God, our Father, Jesus Christ, in a manner which is reminiscent of the heathen. Okay? We're not supposed to do that. Alright? Deuteronomy chapter 12, verses 28 on verse 32. Observe and hear all these words which I command thee, that it may go well with thee, and with thy children after thee forever, when thou doest that which is good and right in the sight of the Lord thy God. When the Lord thy God shall cut off the nations from before thee, whither thou goest to possess them, and thou succeedest them, and dwellest in their land, take heed, watch yourself. Here, do that to yourself too. Okay? Take heed to thyself, that thou be not snared by following them, after that they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. I forget offhand which king it is in the books of the kings. Oh, was it Uzziah? I can't remember offhand. But one of the kings went and got a great victory. And then they saw the gods of either Edom or something like that. Someone will help me out with this. But um, he beat these people, but then he went ahead and took their gods that they served and brought them back to himself and decided to worship them when the Lord God gave him a victory over them. It's like here in America when you have the Japhethites trying to uh, observe and adapt and encompass the traditions and religions, say, of um, the Sioux Indian, the Indian uh, culture with their, you know, their dream catchers and all their, their stuff like that, okay? It, yeah, it might be appealing to the skin suit, but it's devilish. Okay? It's devilish. Okay? Um, we, as saints, 
See, once the Lord takes us out of that, He gives us this. Okay? We are, we are led to Him through this. But see, once He saves you, He dwells within you, and the Spirit of truth will lead you and guide you into all truth, and He'll guide you here. Okay? Eventually. That's why I am very suspect of these people who claim to be saved, and they start out with the authorized version, and then they go, well, the, you know, the oldest, and you know, you, you, go away. Go away. Go away. You are your own standard. Shut up. Get out of here. Okay? But it says right here in verse 30, and this is something that crosses dispensational lines. Okay? It is. Yes, all things are lawful for you. Yes, God is not forcing you to do something. Or neither is the devil. But you know, take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them after that they be destroyed from before thee and that thou inquire not after their gods saying, how did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God. For every abomination to the Lord which he hateth, have they done unto their gods. For even their sons and their daughters, they have burnt in the fire to their gods. Little G. What things soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. Okay? A little G gods. Now see, someone who wants to justify themselves will right away relegate it to, uh, imagine this is a marionette statue or something like that. They will relegate it to, it's like, this is the only way that is to be interpreted and that we are to receive instruction. That we are not to, and of course we're not to do that to idols. But there again, idolatry is an extension of you Wanting to be your own God. We've already covered this. Okay? And today is Friday the 13th. October 13th. Friday. Okay? Now, but before we continue, before we continue, let's go to Psalm 135. Okay? Psalm 135. Thank you, Lord. Verses, I uh, can't read my own writing, 15 on to verse 18. The idols of the heathen are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. Yes! That is referring to a statue uh, or something like that. Yes. Is that the only way for our instruction in his righteousness, is that the only way we can apply that for ourselves today? No. Okay? Watch out for these people who want to justify their paganism doing that very same thing. Well, it's specifically talking about that. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You're right. Mm -hmm. But is that the only way to apply it for our instruction and in righteousness for today? Kaete! You know the truth. If you are a saint, you just don't want to do it because you want to do what you want to do. Okay? All things are lawful to, for you. Yes. Yes. They are. But, but, not all things are expedient. All things are defined not. Okay? Let's continue. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they see not. These idols. Yes, a statue. But what is the ultimate? What are the idols extensions of? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. We've already covered that. They have ears, but they hear not. Neither is there breath in their mouths. They that make them are like unto them. So is everyone that trusteth in them. And for the idols, whether it be a statue or whatever it is that you're putting in the place of God, you are the one that gives it breath, life, and all that kind of stuff. Have you ever? Like we covered with the thing about Dagon. Okay, they had to bear him up. Okay? And uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 4 and verse 6. 
As concerning, therefore, the, the eating of those things that are offered and sacrificed unto idols. Again, yes, he's addressing physical, literal idols, statues and stuff. Is that the extent? See, if that is not that, yes, that's what he's talking about. Is that the extent of it? Because if it is only the extent of it for us doctrinally within the Pauline epistles, well then why can't you go ahead and get a little marionette statue? Huh? Why can't you get a little Buddhist statue? Huh? Huh? Why can't you? What? How far do you go with that then? Okay? It's only talking about that, but it's like, okay. But what else can we get away with then if that is the only extent to it, you know? And in that case, like I said, then why not? Huh? Well, it's not a, it's not a statue. I'm not worshiping it. Um, you ought to look, and this is an older video, on... Uh, Check the video of the channel out um, of what is actual scriptural worship. Okay? Alright? But see, if it's only relegated to one thing, then how far can you go with it? Why not? Okay, I'm not, I'm not worshiping a Mary statue. But I'm worshiping a plant. I'm not worshiping it. Do you, are you aware of what the scriptures actually calls worship? Like I said, I gotta find that thing. And of course, YouTube is doing this ridiculous. Hey, YouTube, stop that with that stupid, ridiculous thing with the, uh, you know, where you can search your channel. It used to be you would search your own channel for a video. Now they put in other things in there. It's like, ah! The remedy is, of course, like when you do it, you need to know this. I just put accountable KJV and then I can serve. But it's like, it's an inconvenience that doesn't need to be there. Ugh. But anyway, anyway, let's continue. Okay, sorry for that little rabbit trail. As concerning though, therefore, the eating of those things that are offered and sacrificed unto idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world and that there is none other God but one. For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods, Lord G, many, and lords many. Okay? But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. We are gods. I've got to write that down. Okay, because a lot of you will go with this and be like, oh, see, bro? Shut up. Shush. Okay? And of course, verse 6 one God, okay? One God. Not this stupid, <coughs> satanic, Babylonian, Egyptian, Roman Catholic, abhorrent trinity. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, are you clear on where I stand on that? Okay? All right, one God who is comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay, one God. The Holy Ghost is the spirit. God the Father is the soul. The Word made flesh. You can figure that out. It's not that hard to understand. Whereas the Trinity, uh, you know, the Trinity was meant to confuse you. Okay, but anyway, the point is idolatry, and because of these little things, we as mankind, we can, even us saints can sometimes, when we get superstitious, for example, today is Friday the 13th. You look online about the history of Friday the 13th, you will actually find many things. The one that I have found that I believe is actually the culprit of it 
is I believe it was in either either September, October, or November. A Friday the 13th in one of those months is when the Knights Templar, the thumbnail, uh, the Knights Templar were disbanded and um, attacked and stuff. You know that ridiculous, stupid movie with Cage in it? I hope you don't called Nat National Treasure that were uplifting the Masons as the good guys. <laughs> there is some historical accuracy in that, that when they were attacked, they took the, the actual treasure, whatever they had, and they, they disappeared and blah, 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 blah. Of course, it's in the, the possession of the Vatican. Okay? But that is what, that is one of the more predominant things uh, historically that you can find is why we hold Friday the 13th as a day of unluckiness or something like that. Dear brethren, that runs parallel to superstitious. To superstition. Superstition. Superstitious. It appears twice in the authorized version of the scriptures. Uh, superstitious and super, uh, superstition. <laughs> superstitious and superstition. Okay? Acts chapter 17. Okay? Acts. Stay with me here. Stay with me here. Okay? Because you read a Bible. Okay? You read a Bible. A Bible is an NIV, an ESV, a New American Standard, the New Reviled Standard Version, the Revised Substandard Version, the Knit like uh, Vato said, uh, Knit Wet Living in the Trash, the Mess, and so on, and so on, and so on. Okay, those are Bibles. This is the Scripture. I am a stickler for a distinction, just so you know, okay? But when you read a Bible, check it. Check your ESV. Check your New American Standard. Uh, I think even the non-King James, the NKJV, also in uh, Acts 17, we're going to read verses 22 and 23, they take out the word superstitious and replace it with what? And that opens the way for so many because it doesn't take a genius to figure out, and even atheists will figure this one out real quick, that Roman Catholicism. Oy, oy vey, oy vey. Roman Catholicism, who mess up the Ten Commandments so they can worship idols is all about superstition with the relics. There, there's a place down the road here called the Raven's Niche, okay, <laughs> where she sells Catholic rosaries and right down the road, right in front of a Hispanic Catholic little church building, literally in a little storefront, okay. They're like right there. It's like that. Not a coincidence. But you can go right down the road and get prayer beads and uh, the little metal things of Saint, Saint, uh, or whatever, okay? Roman Catholicism, Roman Catholics are superstitious. So, when you read your Bible, remember, I'm about distinction, okay? The scriptures, Acts chapter 17, verses 22 and verse 23. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill, and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. You get a Bible. And it says, you are too religious. And that leads, okay, like I said, Rome, Satan has done that. Like they do, like Catholicism takes out one of the commandments and then bumps up the tenth, tenth commandment and makes it two. Okay, they do that so they can worship their little marionette statues and that they can wear the little prayer beads and all their ridiculous nonsense. Okay? Alright? Their little trinkets, their this, their that, and the other thing. 
And then that also gives credence on to, well, I'm spiritual, not religious. It, you know, it, it's like the... I, I'm writing down things for the description box. It's, it's like the... I, I liken this onto in John chapter 4. God is a spirit. You take out the A, God is spirit. Well, hey, man! How in the wide world of sports entertainment are you to... And plus, hey, you know, you're, you're your own standard of truth, so you get a Bible that suits you. How are you supposed to know? Right? Oh, that's, oh, that's right. That's right. You got to go to a Jesuit trained cemeterian who's got that piece of paper. Oh, forgive me. <laughs> you know, I, I liken it onto that. All right? In all things, ye are too sur superstitious. For as I passed by, I beheld your devotion. I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. The heretics will come to this and they say, well, see, they're worshiping the true God. They just don't know it. No, they have no clue who the true God is and they are ignorantly doing what they think is right to a God they have nothing they don't know. They're, it's the epitome of what we've seen already in Deuteronomy chapter 12, verses 1 on, on to verse 4. Deuteronomy chapter 12. Okay? They think what they're doing is right for a God who they think they're serving. Paul is like, you don't know what you're doing. Th th this is, a, and you can go ahead and read the whole context on your own time. It's not that Paul is saying, well, here, let me just take your pagan practices and turn them to God because they're actually like Catholics say, you know, hey, the Hindus, they, they just don't know that they're worshiping the true God. What does that see? See, what does that mean? That means Catholic with their uh, ridiculous ecumenical thing is saying, well, hey, they're all worshiping the same God. They're just doing it differently because they don't know. God. That's not what Paul is saying there. Okay, watch out for that. Watch out for that. No. Paul is like, dude, you, you guys have no idea what you're doing. This is not right. Okay? This is not right. You're, I mean, read the context. Okay? All right, read the context. They were doing pagan practices and thinking they were serving the true God. Paul's like, whoa, dude, time out. No, don't, don't do this nonsense. This is wicked. Let me hear it. Here, let me tell you about the true God, okay? See, and when, when Catholicism comes around and says, well, the Hindus, they're actually worshiping the true God. They just don't know it. You go ahead and say, oh, see? Uh, Taoism, that uh, uh, Tao, Tao Te Ching or whatever that is. I've heard of Christians, of course, trying to say, well, the what, are, what is that thing called again? The Tao Te Ching, okay? Very heretical and dangerous um, uh, book, okay? But I've heard of Christians trying to say, well, that's actually talking about Jesus. No, it's not! No, it's not! Okay? And see, Catholicism comes along with the area that God said, well, yeah, the Tao Te Ching is, yes. They just didn't know it. That's not true. It's not true. And see, you remove superstitious and put religious there. Okay. All right. Acts chapter 25. Now that's superstitious. Superstition. Acts chapter 25. Uh, don't worry uh, there, son. We're, 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 don't worry. <laughs> we're looking at scripture first. Always, always, always consult the scriptures first in looking up a definition of a word. I don't care what certain people out from the Northeast want to tell you. Always search here first. Okay? Okay? Because our beloved, our beloved Noah Webster, praise the and thank you again, brother. I love you. We're really overdue for a good conversation. But uh, even though this is a very useful, helpful, praise the Lord tool, 
Mr. Webster botched it on several occasions. Yes, he did. Okay, I hey, here it is. This is a gift. It was given to me. Okay, but like I said, I highly recommend this. Absolutely. But remember, when it comes to words and defining them, always at least consider the scriptures first. If you get it wrong, you get it wrong. But always consult the scriptures first. Comprende? Okay. Uh, Acts chapter 25, verses 13 on verse 21. And after certain days, King Agrippa and Bernice came unto Caesarea to salute Festus. And when they had been there many days, Festus declared Paul's cause unto the king, saying, There is a certain man left in bonds by Felix, about whom when I was at Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me, desiring to have judgment against him. Who are we reading to? To whom I answered, it is not the manner of the Romans to deliver any man to die before that he which is accused have the accusers face to face and have license to answer for himself concerning the crime laid against him. And consider about the trial of Jesus, just to a thought for your mind, okay? Because even though he was on an unsanctioned trial and they asked him, he, it was all, you know, it was, it was a sham anyway. Let's continue. Therefore, when they were come hither, without any delay on the morrow, I sat on the judgment seat and commanded the man to be brought forth, against whom when the accusers stood up, they brought none accusation of such things I as I supposed, okay? But had certain questions against him of their own superstition. Okay? And of one Jesus, which was dead, whom Paul affirmed to be alive. And because I doubted of such manner of questions, I asked him whether he would go to Jerusalem and there be judged of these matters. But when Paul had appealed to be reserved unto the hearing of Augustus, I commanded him to be kept till I might send him to Caesar. So there we see superstition. Okay? Superstition. Webster's 1828 Dictionary. You know, for a couple number of years, I had the uh, compact edition, which, uh, which served its purpose, and then a beloved friend helped and uh, gave a great gift. Um, if you have the Webster's Compact Edition, it, it's better than nothing, but that one does leave words out. It, it does. Try to find, if you got the Webster's Compact Edition, uh, try to find strike in it. It's not there. It leaves words out. Words that are in Scripture even, so. It, it's better than not having a dictionary, absolutely. But, anyway, anyway. Superstition from Webster's 18. Now we're not going to look up superstitionists, okay? Because superstitionists, one addicted to superstition. Oh, that would be a Catholic. A Catholic, okay? Even a modern Judaist, uh, Judaist, if that's even a word, okay? Let's continue. Superstition. One. Excessive exactness or rigor in religious opinions or practice. Mm. Extreme and unnecessary scruples in the observance of religious rites not commanded. There's this young... Um, I'm going to name this guy. Uh, Amish kid named Titus Morris. Um, who, he's Amish. And he, they, they, uh, I send it to a brother, a couple of brethren. And he lives off grid. And he's a simple kid. But he's, he's Amish. And there's a certain individual who did an incredible work on exposing the Amish. You know, some of you, you those of you saints, you know who I'm talking about. Go there. 
but his work uh, exposing the Amish was quite well. Um, and Mr. Morris recently made a video where he uses the word Vespers. Now, any of you who are in the know, it's like, Vespers? That's Catholic. Yeah. Yeah. So, the height of religious superstition. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Here, right here, Roman Catholicism, this is the height, the epiphany. Uh, epiphany, whatever. Wrong word, excuse me. This is the height of idolatry, wickedness, evil, Satan's church. Right here. Take offense in the gate. Here's superstition for you. The Talmud. The Talmud. With, uh, which, of course, has been expunged. There are copies that are written in Yiddish, Hebrew, uh, that, you know, the Hebraic Jews can get where it actually still says. Uh, there's two. There's the Babylonian and Jerusalem Talmud. One is for the Goyim, you know, Gentiles, and one is for the, you know, the Jews and whatnot. But um, the Talmud is rife with superstition. And remember, the Talmud which is very similar to the Catechism because it's the rabbi's interpretation of the Torah and stuff like that. Okay? This is heresy. This is the lifeblood to a Catholic. This is the height of superstition. Okay? But again, that Titus Morse guy seems like a nice kid. I mean, but, you know, whatever. He's a... He's a yeah, he's Amish. He says, I, I've seen the documentary on him, and, you know, he's like, well, I'm not affiliated. Uh, you might not do that things, but kid... Uh, anyway, anyway, anyway. Tell him I said so. All right. Excessive exactness or rigor in religious opinions or practice. Extreme and unnecessary scruples in the observance of religious rites not commanded, or of points of minor importance, excess or extravagance in religion, the doings of things not required by God, or abstaining from things not forbidden. And any of you saints, it's like uh, abstain, uh, commanding to abstain from meats. Okay, we're going to touch on these things. Okay, but right away the 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 scriptures are for you saints. It's like whoa. Wow, yeah, okay. Or the belief, or the belief of what is absurd, or belief without evidence. Two, false religion, false worship. Three, right or practice proceeding from excess of scruples in religion. In this sense, it admits of a plural. Uh, they, the truth, with superstitions and traditions, taint. Milton. Very good. Four, excessive nicety. N-I-C-E-T-Y. Nicety. Scrupulous exactness. Five, belief in the direct agency of superior powers in certain extraordinary or singular events or in omens or prognostics. Catholic, 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 Catholic. Catholic, 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 Catholic. Okay? Mark, what is that? Mark, Chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7, verses 6 on to verse 13. He answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. 
Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold fast the tradition of men, as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may deck the halls with bo sorry. <laughs> that ye may keep your own traditions. I I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's just one of the things I immediately think of when you're talking about something like this. Leaving that alone. Okay? Sorry. Apologies. That's your fault and your problem if you're into that nonsense. But whatever. Okay? For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whoso curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, if a man shall say to his father or mother, it is Corbin. What does that mean? That is to say, a gift. By who whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. And ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition. Through your tradition. which ye have delivered, and many such like things do ye. Catholicism is tradition over scripture. That is a Pharisee. That is a Catholic. Okay? Okay? Like I said, that dear young fella, that Titus Morris, he, you know, he's like Vespers. And you know what? I don't care what it means. That's a Catholic term. It's not in here. Okay? All right? Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 8. All things are lawful for you. Yeah. Yeah, God's not forcing you to not be a Catholic for a day. Okay? But see, when you do stuff like that, you're yoking yourself. Whether you, however you want to justify it or not, this is who you're yoking yourself up with. Ezekiel chapter 8, verses 11 on to verse 18. Not 7, brethren. And there stood before this, them 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel. The ancients, the older people that ought to be instructing the youth. And today, the older people, the older generation, wants to be like the youth. The beauty of the age is the gray head. And Satan is taught as training people, especially here in America, to all his devices that someone who is my age is supposed to drool and want to be with someone who's 18 or 20. <laughs> well, why not? It's all legal. You, you, you're disgusting. You're disgusting. Okay? Well, Brad, isn't there an age difference in your marriage in your, itself? Yes, there is. I'm almost 50. My wife is well past 50. Okay? We're at the end. They're at the beginning. Do you understand? Now, if there's mutual and they want to do it, that's, that's different, okay? But, you know, the way Satan perverts it, that you think with lust, and you're going after someone you probably shouldn't, okay? They say age is just a number. Well, if you're like 40 and going after a 17-year-old, 17 year old okay how many of these 20 year olds by the way I was 20 once myself some of the worst 10 years of my life okay but uh, yeah most 20 year olds they think they know something don't you mm -hmm. 
That's why we have evidence in Scripture with Timothy being the exception because he was, because why? Timothy was brought up in what? Okay? But, let's, let's continue. See, the older generation is to teach the younger, not trying to be as the younger. Okay? And there stood before them 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel. And in the midst of them stood Jazniah, the son of Shaphan, with, him, with every man his censer in his hand. And a thick cloud of incense went up. Then said he unto me, Son of man, Hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark, every man in the chambers of his imagery? For they say, The Lord seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. He said also unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz, or Tammuz. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? That's not it. <laughs> Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that, than these. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. And behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men, with their backs toward the temple of the Lord, turning their back toward God, and different dispensation, okay? And their faces toward, toward the east. It's the land of the rising sun. I'm in America, that's east, okay? And they worshipped the sun toward the east. Roman Catholicism and their little Baal cookie is perfectly round. And when the Jesuit priest, uh, another Christ, in their satanic, horrid little mass, they take the little perfectly round wafer cookie, and abracadabra, hocus pocus, blah, 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 and they raise the sun. Baalite sun worship. Roman Catholicism. Satan's religion. Roman Catholicism is the Babylonian, Egyptian, ridi uh, ridiculousness, yes, religion perfected as Rome, in Rome as Catholicism. Okay? Be aware of that. And Rome, who is described in Revelation 17, Eric. Okay? Um, is Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Okay? She is the mother of all this heresy. Okay? Uh, was that it that we were going to read to in this? No, verse uh, to the close of the chapter. Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore will I also deal in, my, in fury. Mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. The jealousy of God. He made you. Your belief on that is irrelevant, atheist, Christian. Okay? God made you. And he gets angry when you give to the devil or yourself the praise and worship, the even acknowledgement that he is owed. Look, atheist, I know you don't like to hear this. You owe the Lord. I don't he I didn't ask him to die for me. You don't get it. Some of you never will until you're standing before him at the great white throne. And by then you're gonna wish you had your time back. Say, if only I could have, if only I could have. The poor old sought. 
or fool. Or fool. Now Ezekiel chapter 13, verses, 13, uh, verses 17 on verse 23. Ezekiel 13, verses 17 on verse 23. Likewise, thou son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of, the, out of their own heart, and prophesy thou against them. And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Woe to the women, the daughters of the whore, that sow pillows to all armholes, soft things to cover up going through, okay? And make kerchiefs upon the head of every stature to hunt souls. Will ye hunt the souls of my people, and will ye save the souls alive that, can, that come unto you? Many uh, false Christs. Christ is anointed. That's what that means. Many religions. I, this is the way. Just believe and receive. You're elect and non-elect. And so on and so on and so forth. Okay? And will ye pollute my, me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread and slay the souls that should not die and to save the souls alive that should not live by your lying to my people that hear your lies. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against your pillows, wherewith ye there hunt the souls to make them fly, and I will tear them from your arms, and will let the souls go, even the souls that ye hunt to make them fly. Speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. See, the Word of God, the authorized version of the Scripture, the Word of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, um, is meant first to cut you, to prick you. It's going to do one of Prick you, a little blood comes out, but you're not bleeding out. A cut, okay, you get a prick in your heart, you're like, what must I do? You get cut to the heart, okay? The difference there. Scripture before it can be a glory unto the Lord that he saves you. Scripture has to offend you. And see, when you got Christianity with their little pillows, yea, hath God said, don't scare them, prophesy smooth things. They're debilitating people. They're crippling people. But their God loves you. Okay? Your cursed chips also will I tear, and deliver my people out of your hand, and they shall be no more in your hand to be hunted. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Hunted. Okay, someone has an inquiry of the Lord in a, a state of brokenness. Along comes the disgusting, sleazy believers. Don't worry about it. Oh, you're, you're being superstitious, right? Just believe and receive it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Oh, oh, repentance? That don't worry about that. That, that doesn't work. Pillows. Tomorrow, all armholes. They prevent people entering into the kingdom when they themselves are not entering either. Because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad, and strengthen the hands of the wicked that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. Though they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. <laughs> Sorry. Because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad, and strengthened the hand of the wicked, that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. Therefore ye shall see no more vanity nor divine divinations, for I will deliver my people out of your hand, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. You see, with the with the Friday the 13th thing, people will tend to be superstitious. And there are other things that people will intuit. For example, within Scripture, 
there is a clear system of numbers which is above my pay grade. There's one beloved brother who's more uh, versed in that than I am. Okay, there is a clear system in, of numbers within scripture, yes. People will get a little too carried away in that and become superstitious, okay? Well, today's the 13th, so what? Okay, for an example, let me give you an example. Uh, down the road by the courthouse, there's a white and black building that's kind of beat up, and the address of it is 666, okay? Now, let me give you an example. Let's say I had to go somewhere, and it's like, okay, what's the address? Okay, uh, 666 whatever lane. I, that would definitely now, that would get my attention. That would just like, oh, okay, okay. That, that would definitely get my attention. Would it divert me from doing something? Hmm. Or all these numbers that you can get, they can add up to, add up to something like that. Okay. It'll get your attention, but the question is, is that something that we are to ad adhere to? Because, for example, 666, 6 is the number of man, 666 is the number of the beast. And what is it, ancient Greek or ancient Hebrew, 666 is what? WWW World Wide Web. In the book of Revelation, the Trinity will be on the earth. The dragon, the beast, and the false prophet, 666. The dragon, Satan, the beast, and the false prophet. All three of those, the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet, at one time are going to be on the earth during the time of Jacob's trouble, deceiving people. And they're going to be calling themselves the Trinity. Okay, you people get left behind, you'll see this. Okay, 666. Okay, like I said, if, if I had to go somewhere and the address was 666, of course, they would be like, hmm. 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 Yeah. Yeah, that definitely get my attention. Okay? But does that mean necessarily that we ought to take it to an extreme that we necessarily should? Matthew chapter 10, verses 24 on to verse 28. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple that he, should, that he be as his master, and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed. Listen to what is being said here. Fear them not therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and hid that shall not be known. Stop. Hold up. Well, you may have, him, and rightfully so, like I said, if I had to go somewhere and there's like, well, the address is 666. Ooh. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed. Okay, Lord. There's some things here that are making me uneasy. Do you want me to go to that place still? And let him answer that question for you. Fear them not, therefore. Okay? Fear them not, therefore. I'm not saying that there's an, always an innocence with it. What I am saying is, beware of being superstitious. Okay? Just because something is going on on the 13th today doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be something cursed. Like I said, look this up. Um, it's, you know, the Knights Templar were on a Friday the 13th, where we get the reservation from. It's known as a day of infamy and bad luck. You know, like walking under a ladder, a black cat crosses your path. 
Okay, you throw salt over. Um, okay, uh, certain weird, you know, oh, my ear is tingling. That means someone's talking about me. Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. Even Paul's like, if there's anything like this in your heart where you're divided in your heart, even God will show that to you. Paul says that offhand. I can't remember where it's at. But Paul's like, it's like, okay, if your heart is divided and you want to really, it's like, Lord, show me what's wrong with me. That takes a lot of guts. And so many people don't want to do that. We saints were required to do that. But we're like, okay, Lord, what's wrong with me? Show me. They'll show you. They'll show you. God will even, Paul says it, God will even reveal this unto you. Okay? Like I said, if I had to go someplace and the address was 666, of course I would be like, oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, the numbers of the addresses and everything I received lately... Uh, equals out to 666. Um, Lord, is this something I should be concerned about? Fear them not, therefore. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and him and hid that shall not be known. If the Lord wants you to be concerned about it, he'll tell you. Trust the Lord on that. Okay. Let's continue. What are we reading to here? Verse 28. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light. And what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. And fear not them which kill the body. Don't fret men. But are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able, not Cain. Thank you, brother. Able. It does not say that he will. Able to destroy both soul and body in hell. And we have on perfect authority that the soul is not going to be burnt up and annihilated. It says able, not that he will. Okay? And Satan is all about flesh. Satan will use man. Now, if any of you have encountered actual poltergeist activity actual spiritual encounters you know yeah that that stuff happens that's real but satan will more often than not before he uses poltergeists uh will use man okay You've got to remember that and also look at verses 16 and 18. now see this doesn't mean that we shouldn't be mindful of these things okay we shouldn't we're, we're not Matthew chapter 10, verses 16 on to verse 18. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents. Don't be ignorant of Satan's devices. We're going to look at that here very quick. But don't be ignorant of what Satan will do. Okay? We have, okay? Don't be ignorant of it. But don't let that become the thing over what God says. Hence being superstitious. Okay? <clears throat> Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men. Hold your, hold your place there and go to Matthew 16. Matthew 16. Okay, here's this thing about men, man, flesh. Okay? Uh, six, uh, Matthew 16, 23. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art, the, for thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Satan was cursed to uh, eat dust all his life. Man is dust. Okay? Back to uh, Matthew 10. But beware of men. For they will deliver you up to the councils and they will scourge you in their synagogues and ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake and for a testimony against them and like I said 
2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Second Corinthians chapter 2, verses 11 on to 17. Second Corinthians chapter 2, verses 11 on to verse 17. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Again, we shouldn't be ignorant of what Satan does or his devices, his tricks, what he does. But in not being ignorant of it, we shouldn't let those, his devices, be the dictating thing over what God says. If God doesn't want you to go to like some place that has no, weird number of things that met, equal up to 666 or whatever, God will let you know and trust him and make sure you search him to it's like Lord these are is this something I should be concerned about okay furthermore when I came to throw us to preach Christ's gospel and a door was opened unto me of the Lord I had no rest in my spirit because I found not Titus my brother but taking my leave of them I went from thence into Macedonia now thanks be unto God which always causeth us to triumph in Christ and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ, in them that are saved, and in them that perish. To the one we are the savor of death unto death, and to the other the savor of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, like Catholics do, but as of sincerity, but as of God, as ambassadors for Christ, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. Okay? Corrupt the word of God. All their superstitious commandments and testimonies and uh, traditions. Okay? Okay? Galatians chapter 3. You know, we, I mean, and hey! Like it says here, I'll go to Galatians chapter 3, but very quickly like it says here in Romans chapter 2, okay, uh, uh, ah, yeah, Romans chapter 2, verse 12, uh, 21, Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself, Thou that preachest a man shall not steal, dost thou steal? Um, this is a kind of a kick to me too. Because instinctively sometimes, I myself will too feel, you know, get a little super, superstitious about things. We got to be on guard about that, brethren. We really do. Okay? Galatians chapter 3. Verses 1 on to verse 3. Okay? O oh, foolish, behaving as if you say in, their heart, in your heart, there is no God. O oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you, that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you, in the way Paul walked, how he lived his life accordingly. Okay? This only what I learn of you. Receive ye the capital S spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, capital S, the Lord, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Mm. Galatians 4, 8 on to verse 11. Howbeit then, when ye knew not God, ye did service unto them which by nature are no gods. But now, after that ye have known God, or rather, are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements, whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage? Ye observe days, and months, and times, and years. I am afraid of you. 
lest I have bestowed upon you labor and me. And you gotta remember when Paul's making mention of these things, it's in context to the scriptural holy days, not the holidays that come from Rome. Remember that. Okay? And uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. First Thessalonians chapter 2. First, uh, First Thessalonians chapter 2. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 17 on to verse 20. But we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time, in presence, not in heart, endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. Wherefore we would have, wherefore we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Mm. For what is our hope, or our joy, or, or crown, or rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For ye are our glory and joy. Mm. And also go to Colossians chapter 2. I, don't, I must have forgot to put that in the notes. Colossians chapter 2. What does Mystery Babylon, the whore, Roman Catholicism, do to try to trip you up? Colossians 2 verse 8. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the coils and not after Christ. And they replace it. They replace it with man-made tradition. Okay? And then in Colossians chapter 2, okay, verses 16 on to verse 23. Let no man therefore judge you in meat, or in drink, or in respect of an holy day. Holy day in scripture is reference unto the scriptural Jewish holy days. Not the ones that come from Rome. Okay? People will come to this to justify what comes from this. When Paul, in context, is making reference to the Jewish holy days. Comprende? Just as if I... Which are a shadow of things to come. Okay? Wait. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbaths. Proof enough in the verse itself what Paul is referring to. You know, the, those of the circumcision, those who want to bring you back on, into bondage, want to say, hey, you got to keep the commandments. Or, hey, you got to keep these laws which we have come up with. Okay? Which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. Angels of light. Intruding into those things which he had not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. I went to Mass. I've been confirmed. I've been dictated. Okay, I believe and received. I'm elect. I'm this. I, I, I. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Okay? And not holding the head. Capital H. Reference unto our Lord Jesus Christ. From which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increaseth with the increase of God. Wherefore if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the coil, why though living in the world are ye subject to ordinances? Lent. Uh, commanding from abstaining from meats. Don't eat cow. Don't eat pork. Which not only Rome does, but Islam, 
Hinduism and stuff like that. Okay? Perfect example about that. That's 1 Timothy chapter 4. Check that out. Okay? Wherefore, if ye be dead from, with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why as through live, though living in the world are ye subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are to perish with the usings, after the commandments and doctrines of men, which things have indeed a shoe of wisdom and will worship and humility. They look good. All things are lawful for you. And neglecting of the body, not in the honor of the satisfying of the flesh. We as saints, like I said, okay, um, if you're being uncomfortable by something that's like, okay, today's the 13th, and I got stuff to do, and all these numbers are. You know, sh should I, Lord, you know, Lord, should I, consider, Lord, what do you, what, see, you go to the Lord, search the scriptures daily, examine yourself, Lord Jesus, you have a promise, the Lord will reveal even this unto you, okay, he will make his will known unto you, do you want to hear it, do you want to hear it, do you want to listen, okay, okay. Romans chapter 8, and then we'll be done. Just a quick video. I, I really wanted to, you know, I wanted to, but it's something the Lord wanted to bring out. Okay? Romans chapter 8, verses 35 on to verse 39. Keep this in mind. Like I said, like I said, certain things would definitely get my attention and be like, nah. Okay, Lord. Is that me just being superstitious? Or do you want me not to do that because of, you know, are these things that you're warning me about through this? That's when you got to, you know, not be like Shimon the sorcerer. You pray for me. No, that's when you, you get down on your knees. You get this book. And it's like, Lord! Shoot thy servant truth. You know that takes courage? Because, you know, the, the Jesus of the authorized version of the scriptures, all he's going to do, and this is why nobody likes him, except those who are saved. You know what he does? The true Jesus of scripture takes his finger, puts it on that one thing you lack. That's why some of these atheists, it's like, uh, you haven't given any evidence that your God exists. I I'm sorry. Again, here's all the evidence you need. But you don't want it! You can lead the horse to water, but you can't make the horse drink the water. And I have encountered, unfortunately, lovely individuals <laughs> who I, you know, I have, where it's like, the Lord's like, don't. Lord, don't even waste your time. Have you saints ever encountered that? Not out of your own, I don't want to talk to that guy. My, my, his goodness, if that were a deciding factor, I want to have spake to even a third of the people that the Lord has led me to. Do you think out of my own flesh that I would go up to a young Hamite who has a pistol in his waistband and, you know, not, you know, doesn't have it brandished, but you could see it, you know? Do you think out of my own whatever I go up to a group of guys like that, the one's got a gun, and witness to him? Okay? 
No, no. The Lord is the one that orchestrates these things. We trust Him. It's not out of our own fleshly dictate. We seek Him. He's the one that guides us in these things, okay? Okay? It takes courage to examine yourself. It does. Because if there's something amiss, the Lord is going to put His finger on that one thing you don't like. That one thing you lack. And it's usually the thing that you hold so dear that the Lord God hates. That's why I have encountered people where the Lord has totally. It's like, I wanted, and there have been times where I wanted to force it. But the Lord's like, Brad, don't. You're not going to, no. I'll make you look bad. <laughs> and in making you look bad, you're going to make me look bad. Because you serve me. Okay? I don't serve myself. I serve the Lord. The way we serve Him reflects Him. And, brethren, 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 when you try to force something that the Lord doesn't want you to do, it doesn't end up well. And not only do you make yourself look like a horse's rear end, which is nothing in comparison to making the Lord look bad. It's not about us. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. But, always remember, saints, Romans 8, 35 on verse 39, then we'll be done. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? No one. We're saved. Once saved, always saved. Those who go to the Lord on his terms, and he actually saved them and sealed them. Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long, we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, and the wages of sin is death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that is specifically for saints, saved people. And that's going to be it for this little video. Uh, like I said, you know, there is in and of itself nothing wrong with having a reservation with like something comes up and it's like right away it's like, 666 or Friday the 13th or oh there's a don't walk under a ladder or there's a black cat you know or whatever okay all right Lord is this something I should be concerned about or should we or should I just go on you know there's a difference between doing that rather than one who gives themselves into it and into the false religion which is what we already looked at anyways but that's going to be it for this little video I uh, hope, hope this gives you something to think about something to consider okay. I am not in any way and how could you I mean devils can do that easily to twist everything not condoning it but you know again search the scriptures here's the answers okay Lord should I do this yes or no is this something I should be concerned about yes or no these are really weird things Lord is that is are you warning me he'll tell you he'll tell you the ultimate question I want to leave you with you want to hear it 